Hi guys, and welcome to the Off Grid and Connected podcast, which is dedicated to off-grid building, community, and humanitarianism. To know more about what we do, our projects, other shows, and ways you can support us or join in, go to offgrid.vision. This second interview is with Luma Yalika, who, unlike his name suggests, doesn't make beautiful pottery, but he makes beautiful systems on Earth ships. We cover his story, his growing up in New York and working as a regular plumber before he started a career with Earthship Biotecture and became the systems guy, which often means, as he says, digging holes. But we cover a bunch of challenges of building in remote, isolated environments, how to keep the atmosphere great on a project, and much more. Lou has an incredible knack for making people feel welcome. He taught me on my first build and hasn't stopped since. So it gives me great pleasure to share this conversation with you. Thanks for listening and please enjoy this conversation with Lou. So Lou, thank you for coming on. Second podcast. Um, I'm not sure if you've done this before, but this is the second one after speaking to Harry generally a couple of days ago. So um, still unsure about the name it could be off grid and connected it could be off grid vision but i'm sure by the time it's published i'll have i'll have finalized that but where am i finding you right now i'm home actually in taos yeah i'm at home so that's <laughs> uh, that's um is are you actually in a in a you're in an off grid sort of area but are you actually off grid in in the house you're in right now no and i and i don't live in the community either um, so yeah, I, I actually, the, the house before this, I lived in, we used to catch, I, I used to catch rainwater. Um, it was set up for rainwater. And then in the future, there was, they set up to like tie into solar. Um, but yeah, now I had to, I had to move. They sold that house. And while I was actually, while I was on a job in Uruguay, they sold the house, put all my stuff in storage. I came back homeless and then, <laughs> You know, I found this place. Oh, great. Because just before we were doing sound check, um, I said, I said, what did you have for breakfast? And you said, um, nothing. You're just getting up. Um, there's obviously a big time difference between us. But what were you up to last night? That's a secret, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> I, had a, I had a show last night. Uh, I played drums in a punk rock band. Um, it was cool. We put on a show at this space which is a new DIY space. So we're hoping that this will blow up um, into, I don't know, more more of a, a, a another type of community that I'm involved with, um, which is music and art and mm -hmm. uh, theater and all sorts, dance and all that. So yeah, it's a space that we're hoping to bring people to do all that stuff as well. And I think, you know, a lot of our shippers that come by will love this space and, get involved as well well i mean that's something i'm definitely excited about like all that I've, I've you know this whole idea of um of speaking to people and having conversations is to try and create more community or at least people who are involved in similar things and pushing in the similar directions and and music and and just generally living off grid and and working with the current rather than against it you know the phenomena as mike would say that are around seems to make so much sense doesn't it i mean they go hand in hand yeah yeah it's funny though because like in some ways i'm not about community i'll be yeah, honest yeah no i hear you i hear you. <laughs> and a lot of people kind of don't understand that <clears throat> and they're like well you how can you not be about community you work at airships and i mean that's kind of one of your questions as well that i saw yeah, yeah. I mean, I sent you some rough drafts. What I like doing here is just, I just like talking. I mean, the community thing for me is another one that I've always been very wary about. Um, I feel like I'd have to, if I was ever going to live in one, I'd have to be, you know, I'd have to really buy into the, the decision making processes and really understand what the upside is. Because I think a lot of people who, you know, who, who are interested in, you know, as we are, I think I can say, safely say into, living with the environment and living, you know, in a, in a resilient way. 
um, given all the, the threats that, that are around, whether it's political or environmental. Um, I think we're also tend to be quite sort of, um, characterful people and, and, and to get everyone together pushing in the same direction, direction is not always super easy. I mean, what's, what's your experience been of what you've seen around, around where you are? It's funny. I, I, in the punk rock community, actually, I see a lot that was so, was so like our ideology is, 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 has a lot of resistance in it, mm -hmm. you know, because of the things that we're passionate about and everything. And I feel like that's kind of the same with Earthships, you know. And then when you get a community together, there's still that instinct of resistance, you know, that you're so used to doing mm -hmm. and, and being, you know, and living. And that that's kind of hard for me, you know. Like, I, I, I'm more about going with the flow and, you know, change uh, by example, you know. Mm -hmm. Instead of fighting and fighting and fighting, it's, 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 it's tiring. Yeah, I think you sort of give a lot of power to what you resist as well, don't you? I mean, if, if you know, I always feel, I mean, it's maybe it's a bit of a, a silly example, but with the terrorism stuff that there is around, I mean, if no one reported it and everyone just ignored it, it would go away because there would be no point in doing it, you know? And if you, maybe you could obviously sort of, I mean, it's a bit of a politically charged thing, but if you could celebrate the people who lost their lives and, and all the respect would still be there in our hearts, et cetera, et cetera, you know, but we wouldn't be, be glorifying it. And it's the same with anything you resist. You sort of end up giving it power. I don't know if, if, if you agree or. I think, I think in some cases, uh, and I think in other cases, it's, I think it's relative, you know, um, you know, cause there is a lot of greed out there. I, I believe in fighting to an extent for sure. I mean, you can't let people walk all over you. You can't let greed walk all over you. You can't let ego walk all over you as well. And that those are those are inner battles as well for for some people, you know. Yeah, that that, that comes out that comes out on builds, doesn't it? I mean, that's something I sort of wanted to talk to you about because I see I see your role. Obviously, you know, just so everyone knows, you you take care of a lot of the systems specifically, uh, plumbing, but also the electricity. But when there's that group dynamic that needs to get set up and 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 it can happen it can go in many different ways i see your role as being one of a teacher but also just doing a really um positive influence on on making the group gel i mean is that something you think you do consciously or is that something that just happens it happens that's that's how i like to work i believe you get more honey i mean no you get more bees with honey than <laughs> vinegar, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm generally a positive person, you know. I, I mean, I have my moments for sure. Yeah. But when I'm on the job site, I, if I am feeling having a bad day or whatever, you know, yeah, I got to keep positive. Yeah. We got to keep our team going. We got to keep our team, you know, positive and motivated. You got to keep them feeling like um you know you got to feed their their, their self-esteem as well so that uh -huh. not only that they perform but but that they they get the reason why they're there you know they're there to learn they paid to come and learn and work and go to school and all that you know so if you don't tell them like they did a good job you know when they do a good job then there's no value in that. And then they feel like they didn't do anything, you know? Yeah. But, but, you know, we, you know, we all, I try, I try, I use music, you know, to motivate people. Just having a positive attitude, jokes, joking around, singing on the job, anything that just brings up spirits, you know? Um, at the end of the day, if they're working really hard, buying beer or, or soda, if they don't drink beer or water, or whatever, just, a little gift of appreciation goes yeah. a long way. Well, yeah, I think that what, that reminds me of samosas. Um, samosas come to mind. <laughs> yeah, samosas, yeah. Um, just just having having a bit of food around and a bit of extra, um, maybe a you know beer to say thank you to people. And um, but it, that's something that, that's always struck me about the builds I've been on, and 
is the the atmosphere is all is you know has been very very good. I mean, maybe that's something you could, you know, we're going through it now. But but is this other stuff you do you do consciously? Is the stuff you do at the beginning? Is the stuff you guys talk about, or is it just totally organic? It's pretty organic. We we don't we don't talk about you know morale, bringing up morale or anything like that. I think we just we all know it. It's something I think that was in us already, but that we learned how to to present more and 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 learn the benefits of it for the for the students and us, you know, um, and the job itself. Yeah. You know. What other aspects do you think? I mean, I'm I'm thinking about aspects that work well on builds. One thing, for instance, that always comes into my mind is this delegation that goes on. I mean, you you work with quite complex, sometimes quite complex areas. And yet I've noticed that crew will often pass on as soon as they can, they will pass on jobs to other people and and transfer ownership. Would you agree? Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Because that's how how you learn, you know. And that feeds that positive cycle, doesn't it? Where people, you know, feel super satisfied at the end of the day because they've installed a you know, plumbing system or they've done something with um, the panels or whatever it is. Like a little bit of electrical work, carpentry, anything, you know, like, um, and when you, you step back at the end of the day and you look at that, you're like, wow, I, I, I did that. Yeah. You know, install a toilet. I have so many students that are so excited to install a toilet. Yeah. And I bet they've never even thought of that in their life, you know, like until they came to the job. Yeah, just seeing how everything works, and especially, and maybe you could just, for the sake of people listening who 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 haven't, you know, been on a a build, we did speak with Harry about the seven principles. So we're not going to definitely, we're not all six principles. I like to include or think about maybe a biodigester as almost a seventh one to get methane, but that's um that's another story. But maybe you could take people through the journey that water takes in an airship. Well, we catch uh, we catch rainwater on the roof and then from there it goes into what we call a scupper it's kind of like a filter so it passes through some gravel so that's our first place where we kind of filter the rainwater and it goes into the cisterns where we store the water and from there we gravity feed and that's all gravity so far and from there we gravity feed to a small filter just a particle filter and then that goes to the pump that's to protect the pump. And now our pump is, is DC, uh, so it's run on solar, solar power. Uh, and then we pressurize the water with the pump. And then it goes to a couple other filters uh, for, for particles and for drinking. Um, so from there, we call, that, we call that the WOM. And then from there, it goes to, um, uh, to making hot water. Whether you want to make it a solar or you want to make it with um, conventional methods, however you want to make it. And then cold water as well uh, to all the fixtures in the house. And then that water we use, um, so this is the first time we're using the water, right? Um, we bathe in it, we wash our clothes in it, we do dishes with it, we cook with it. And then that drainage, um, there's two different drainages. There's gray water and there's black water. The gray water is mostly from um, showers and sinks and, and washing machines, stuff like that. No particles in it, no food particles or solids. And and then the toilet and kitchen sink are considered black water. And the toilet and kitchen sink, we take the drainage from them straight out to a septic tank. And then from a septic tank to a black, uh, um, a black water cell where we grow plants outside. And then to a leach field. Now, the gray water is pretty much like the beginning of the path. So I, I mentioned that we use the water first when we shower, when we uh, wash our hands, washing machine. Then that drainage goes into our gray water planters, which is in the greenhouse. So the second time we use the water is when we water the plants in that greenhouse. And then from there... We, you know, we build these planters and it's pretty much a, a holding cell for gray water while the gray water waters the plants. And then from there, that gray water we pump to the toilet uh, to flush with. That's the third time we're using water. That same water. It's the third time we're using it. 
you flush it, making black water, and then that black water goes outside, like I said, uh, to another cell, to a septic, and then another cell, and that cell would be the fourth time we use that water. Right. And we're talking about, you know, somewhere, this happens in a place like Taos, where, what is it, eight inches, is it, of, of rain? Yeah, about seven, yeah. seven inches a year. A year. And, and some people do do manage to live on that, don't they? I mean, I know some people get water delivered, um, but some people do live on that or, or not? Uh, we, we usually have to get water delivered. Um, you can, if you built a big enough structure to catch the water on. So, you know, like for, for a smaller family or something, you had to build a bigger structure to just have more surface area to catch, capture more water and have more cisterns. And then if you have as many showers as we did in Nepal, of course, um, yeah. you're going to really use that water up quick. Yeah, and I hear it's 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 actually it's so it's it's funny. It's uh, we get students come here, like, and they're from cities, you know, and everything. And, and I'm from the city, so you know, um, and they come here all clean and everything, and um, and you know, you know, shaven and nice haircuts and everything. And then they see us, this rugged bunch of like <laughs> desert rats, just like <laughs> you know, building construction off grid, and then they. They come in. By the time they leave, they got like full beards, dreads, and, like <laughs> <laughs> not showering for like a month. You know. Yeah, there's um, a there's a funny look that seems to sort of organically happen, isn't it? Yeah, they transform into this. Yeah. What 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 happened with you? What was what was your transformation? I mean, you you came as you said from the city. You, you're from New York. What happened? How did you find yourself where you are? Oh, that's a, all right, that's a good one. That's a big question. But um, uh, in 2009, I I went through a lot. That year was a really rough year for me. Um, I lost my, my father that year. I got a divorce. My band broke up, and I lost my job. Wow. All in one year. Wow. So... I was like, okay, well, <laughs> what the fuck, man? Like, <laughs> what am I gonna do now? All right, all right. I get it, universe. You, you, you know, you're trying to tell me something. There's a lesson in here somewhere. I just don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah, man, it hit me hard. So, you know, uh, I could, I, I, um, I remember seeing Mike getting interviewed on the Stephen Colbert report. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, yeah, a long, a long time ago. Uh, and that was before 2009. And uh, they were premiering The, the Garbage Warrior, mm -hmm. which is a documentary about airships. They were premiering that in New York City. So I was like, okay, well, um, this guy's pretty crazy. You know, he's like, this is wild. What are they talking about building with garbage and, and, and things like that? And, I, and you know, I'm, I, I grew up in New York City and... Um, I've been a, I was a plumber there for uh, what was it ten years before I moved to Taos. So I was doing plumbing. I was in the union, um, and I saw Mike on the Stephen Colbert report. You know, um, and like, man, this dude is crazy, right? So uh, time went on. I, I saw the garbage worry. I was like, wow, this is this is cool, man. Banana tree in the house. That's like insane, and like it's really cool and. And I started to learn about gray water and black water at that time, around that time, you know, and sustainable living. And um, I didn't really, like, sought after it, you know. I was just like, yeah, this is cool, you know. It's just something interesting to me. Um, a different way of building, you know, because I was always building and I like working with my hands and everything. So I saw him on the, on the – uh, I watched The Garbage Warrior. And then years years passed, maybe like three or four years or something like that passed. And I was like, wow. Um, you know, all this happened, then 2009 came and all that happened to me. And I was like, you know, I need, I need to get out of the city for a second. I need to just go to a different country, you know, and, and, and try something new for a minute. Clear my head, get out, I don't know, something new. So I remember that Earthships took on interns. There wasn't even an academy at that time. They took on interns. Uh, so I said, well, let me, let me get on their website and check that out, you know? So I, I checked it out and they were, they had a job in Mexico 
Um, so I said, okay, cool. You know, that'd be cool. Mexico. That'd be awesome. You know, by the beach and everything. Whereabouts in Mexico was it? That was Baja, Mexico, Todos Santos. And it was, it was beautiful. It was fun. I, I went for a whole month. Um, which is hard to take off time of anything of your life in, in, in New York City, you know. But I went for a whole month and I had a blast with these guys. And I wasn't even thinking, I was like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just, a lot of a lot of interns there were like, you know, trying to get jobs with them and everything and wanted to work with them. And, and I, I just remember being like, you know, yeah, this is cool, man. I'm, I'm just going to learn how to do this, you know, and then pop right back home and then maybe build one, I don't know, upstate New York somewhere or something, you know. So I went there and I hanging out with these guys, partying with them, working with them, everything, laughing with them. And uh just such a good vibe from those guys. And uh and then by the end, you know, Mike was like, you know, you're a plumber, right? And I was like, Yeah. And he's like, Well, um, where do you live? And I said, I live in New York City. He was like, Well, do you wanna do you wanna work with us? And I was like, Well, okay, uh whew, I don't know. <laughs> what do what you know, that's a big change in my life. I mean, what are you going to offer me? What are you going to pay me? I'll give you $10 an hour and no health benefits. <laughs> <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> like, I mean, you leave a union job, you know, which I still had at the time. I still was working. Um, and uh, so I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll, I don't know. Let me go home, Mike. Let me see what's going on. So I went home and, and, then, and then work got slow. And then, uh, you know, I lost my job. So I was like, well, and that, that's common in the union in New York City, you know, work gets slow and then they lay people off and then they come back like maybe six months later or something like that sometimes. Uh, so, yeah, I was like, all right, well, fuck it. Why not? I called them up and I said, hey, Mike, um, that, does that offer still stand? The job, you know, not the pay, though, you know. Yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the job, not the pay. Great. You know, and he's like, yeah. And uh, so he was like, no, 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 we'll, 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 we'll do better by you. And then, you know, once you come out here, you get your license and we'll talk even more, you know. I was like, all right, cool. So he made me a, a, an offer that I thought was pretty cool to start off with. And, you know, um, I packed up everything I had. And, and in a few months, I moved out to Taos. Never even been... I, I've been to California once at that time. Never even been to the to the West Coast. Packed everything up and just came to Taos, man. Wow. And so I've been here for about eight, eight or nine years now. Yeah. And, and, and how many... So we, you're doing, obviously, client builds and then humanitarian stuff as well. Yeah. Yeah. What kind of ratio is there between the two, would you say? Um, it's, it's more client build and it's more, um, uh, working at home here. So we, we, we built spec homes also that we, you know, we, um, get a loan from the bank, build, build a home here in the community and then eventually put it up for sale. And we're always doing that by the time that's funny. Mike just texted me while we're, <laughs> while we're talking. Yeah. So we, we're, all, we're always doing that. That's a steady work at home. And then they're like the client, uh, some client builds out of, out of the country or out of town. And then there's uh, humanitarian work. Humanitarian work isn't as much as, you know, we all would love it to be. Um, but this year it seems to be more than usual. Yeah. I mean, that's something that that's one of the main aims of this, uh, of this little experiment. I mean, I, I, I said to myself, it's going to be either in the worst case scenario, it's going to be a few good conversations with great people and I'm going to learn. And in the best case scenario, it, it will attract people and hopefully some funds and interest to more humanitarian work because that's definitely what makes me passionate is, uh, is the kind of work we've been doing. I mean, we met, you and I met in Malawi, which was what, 2013. Yeah. And, um, you know, the, the, those are really intense situations, aren't they? Sometimes, you know, um, but, but really, rewarding i mean what 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 stories spring to mind about humanitarian builds or which ones have you done now i mean which was your first one um my first one was in in guatemala um 
and that was such a fun job. There was so it was only uh, like not even two weeks we were there. Um, it was a lot of crew. I had so much fun there in, in Guatemala. That was my first build. Uh, we built it for a family with this uh, organization who have been building schools there in the in the in the the, the town. Guatemala was your first humanitarian, and which which other ones have stood out? I mean, we were in Malawi together. You went back there, so you did two Malawis. Yeah. You've done Colombia. Yeah. You've done. Yeah, that wasn't so humanitarian. But Colombia, Indonesia, Ushuaia was a a visitor center. Like more more of the humanitarian work was was really yeah Malawi twice Guatemala. Actually, we we went to Guatemala twice. I only went once. I was on the second one. Where else was a humanitarian build? Um, Czech Republic was supposed to be like a, a small school. Um, we don't know. I'm not sure how what what that building turned out to be. Jeez, I'm drawing a blank. I don't know why. <laughs> oh, Philippines. 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 Yeah. yeah. The Philippines was that was the first time, man, I, I've ever been to a place. Um, after a natural disaster. Yeah, tell me about that. What what was the what was your impression as you were driving in? That, that it was intense. I mean, you know, usually when we 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 roll up to a place, it's like you know, oh, we're filled with this fire and 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 energy and like we're just like wow, you know, this is a new place, you know, and yeah, we, we know what we're in for. We know like we're about to receive like 40 students and with fire and, and, and ready to pound tires and like this intense, we know what we're ready for, yeah. you know? And then we go to this place and we're like, Whoa, wow. It's like destroyed, destroyed, man. We saw like, what well, well, um, you know, tractor trailers flipped over and, 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 like, and like up on the hill, you know, it's like, well, how did it get up there? You know, and it's just like you—you you just start imagining the the intense waves and 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 how high the water was for 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 it to move a, a tractor trailer and and for it to be up in the mountain like that. You know, it's like wow, man. And then you see like everything's just destroyed completely. It was completely underwater. Wow. For the most part, you know, and and just destroyed palm trees falling everywhere and and you see people still moving around and doing what they needed to do for the day you know so how did that work i mean you were you were working with an organization there weren't you yeah yeah um whew, i can't remember their name it's been a while oh i can put it in the show notes but like there, there's they so you turned up mike had had designed the wind ship yeah can you talk us through that? Um, so yeah, we um, so Mike designed the wind ship for for these natural disasters. You know, um, it was a you know tsunami that that hit them. You know, the winds were, were were intense. You know, and 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 palm trees falling down everywhere. And we went in there. And we we I think we only had like ten days. It's one structure, but there were two two rooms. You know, in ten days. We built all this. Um, I actually went there to stage that one. The second one, I think I, I was there to stage. Um, and, yeah, and gathering like a bunch of cardboard and tires from, from a, a place that was, you know, all, um, all messed up from <laughs> was, was kind of a challenge as well. Uh, you would think, oh, there's garbage everywhere, you know, but, but like trying to find cardboard was hard, you know. So it was two simple survivals facing each other that let the wind sort of would carry the wind over in a, in a wave and protect the inside, which was a sort of courtyard, wasn't it? And then two rooms that came off the sort of protected courtyard. Yeah, yeah. And you were staging that. So to, what, is, what does that involve? Someone says, okay, we need to, you know, I mean, I, I obviously know a little bit about it from doing it in Nepal, but what did that involve for you that time with it being a disaster area? Yeah, it was it was trying to get well, first you have a budget which is always on your mind constantly. 
whatever you're doing, you know, buying toilet paper to take a poop, you, you know, you're thinking about how much it costs, yeah. like everything, you know, um, cause you have such a tight budget and, and, and you want to see this building happen, you know? Um, so yeah, we, that's, that's, you know, you know, we don't, we don't, we're not trying to, we're Westerners, you know, so they see us and they, they see money, you know, so they see an opportunity, you know, and, and I don't blame anybody and that's how the world works. You know, yeah. I do, I do the same. I, I'm to an extent, you know, I do the same. You see an opportunity, you're going to go after it. Yeah. Um, that's how they look at it. They're not looking at it as like, oh yeah, I'm ripping this person off. They're looking at it as like, okay, I see an opportunity. There's some money here. I, I don't know. Who knows what just happened to them in their personal life after a disaster like that? You know, sure they lost a couple of family members or something, and they need to, I don't know, build up their house or something. I'm sure they lost a home. You know, so yeah, some people probably lost entire businesses. So, um, but anyway, yeah. So it's it's like gathering all these materials, um, also buying materials uh, to make this happen in a in a in a timely manner as well. You know, uh, dealing with a language barrier as well. Yeah, so materials, we're talking now about tires, uh, some bottles and cans, the, you know, standard earth ship stuff, um, cardboard for, um, then some rebar, cement, um, yeah. and then, wood. yeah, wood. And, and then what about your, the plumbing side of stuff? I mean, how, how does that work when you go to all these different countries? Um, does it change a lot or is it kind yeah. of quite similar? Oh yeah, that's, that's the, that's a challenge, uh, definitely a challenge. Um, it, it, every, all over the world, I mean, they, I mean, some places use similar things, uh, similar pipe connections and stuff that, that we use. Um, some people, when I ask them for a certain fitting, they look at me like, if I'm speaking a different language, you know, <laughs> totally, you know, and it might even be in the English speaking country, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, that's quite a challenge trying to, you know, find the right materials for getting the job done. Um, so you just kind of got to be, uh, adaptable, you know, and, and roll with the punches and see what they have and, and, and get a little inventive, you know. Which, which have been the most challenging builds, um, from that? standpoint i would say malawi was pretty challenging right it was so remote we couldn't get the the size uh tarp that we needed or or or, or plastic you know um but the cool thing is like when 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 you do find a solution then you remember that for the next job you know you end up keeping that in your memory of tools you know of, of possible solutions. I mean, I had a question here about um, lessons from from the experience, and and uh, that that that's exactly what this is, isn't it? Is 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 seeing a solution and then reusing it. I mean, the only time I ever saw you, I don't think I think the only time I've ever seen you um, worried on a build was one lunchtime in Nepal when the the tarp that we'd got was not the measurements that it said on the package. Yeah. Um, yeah. And again, that worry wasn't shown in front of the students. They were at lunch. So yeah. Then, <laughs> so they didn't really see like what goes behind all that, you know? Yeah. You know, so Harry had a good solution, you know, uh, that's another thing we, we do is when we do have a problem, it, we try to consult each other and see if anyone has an idea, you know? And yeah, Harry came up with a good idea. Kind of like, um, what we did was we, we, it, the concept of like, you know, a, a waterproof bag that rolls up, yeah. uh, we kind of use that to seam, we use that concept to seam two uh, tarps together and to come up with one big tarp to fit inside, inside that hole uh, for the septic tank. Yeah, I, m- I remember that happening. I remember it in real time and I was definitely um, stressing down at lunch when, when you guys weren't coming down. Um, but that's that's I mean we've talked about delegation but that this brings up another thing that I think I should do well and that's um when there is a problem it's a very 
open, honest process of fixing it. There's, there's no trying to hide or shirk away from stuff or um, even, even blame people for, for where the problems come from. It's just, it's just straight, you know, full steam ahead. Yeah, exactly. Because if you sit there and blame somebody, if you sit there and whine and cry about it, that's not, what's that going to do? It's not going to get you anywhere. It's not going to give you a solution. It's not going to move on, move the job forward. It's not going to build morale for the students. It's just going to look like you're sitting there complaining and not knowing what you're doing. Absolutely. No, it's, uh, it, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Where do you see the, the, the future? You know, what would you, what would you like to be heading towards? Um, do you think with, with this world of, of building and, I, you know, I, I like, uh, I love humanitarian builds. That's that, that, that's where my heart is, you know, and it would be cool to, uh, to see more of those projects happen. Um, and to just see this idea grow. I mean, that's simple, you know, in, in, instead of trying to like change the world overnight, it doesn't, it doesn't happen like that, man. Not, not, most change doesn't come overnight, you know, some does, but not a lot, you know, I mean, that, that big of a change needs to evolve. So just, just be nice to see more people open to the idea, just to be open. What, what would, that brings a question. Um, I, I, this is one that would definitely have been useful for you to have seen beforehand. So I'm going to put you on the spot, but someone, you know, gives, donates a million dollars. What, what would you see as, you know, for humanitarian builds? What would you, what would be your next steps? In at this point, yeah. In this time, yeah. I, I head to Puerto Rico and help people out there. Yeah. Right now. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, there's probably other places that need it just as bad, you know. But I, I build build other ships there in Puerto Rico. Get them off the grid. Get them so they don't have to rely on Donald Trump. Wow. You know, or any president. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. One thing that, that, that excites me about Earthships is the amount of um, teaching that's going on. I mean, you've got the academy, you've got people um, coming on, on, on builds, humanitarian builds. And there is a sort of scale, a lot of potential for scalability. Um, what do you think is holding that back? I mean, it's happening, but how could it go even, even quicker? Spreading the knowledge? Yeah, spreading the knowledge, more projects, more teams, more people involved. Is there, you know, you may not have something that comes to mind, but is there anything that comes to mind as, as a block or a bottleneck in that process? I feel like money. It's always, it's, it's, uh, a lot of it has to do with money. It sucks, you know? I, I mean, you try, you try not to let that be a, an obstacle you know and we're, and we're not but as it's a, it's a, it's a little bit of a bottleneck yeah. you know yeah i mean it, it happened in nepal yeah right i mean we were we could only be there for three weeks if we had a little bit more money and we had one more week there we would have completely finished that building you know well the good the good news is that they're, they're busy finishing it now i mean they've um they're, yeah. they're doing a whole bunch of stuff there. I've been in touch with Sunita. Um, I saw some pictures. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, a, it's a beautiful building. The good side to that is that locals are, are getting paid yeah. to work. Yeah. You absolutely. Know? So it opens up work for them. Well, Ganzi was delighted at what he learned. He was really excited about, about you know, he was used to doing similar, similar buildings uh, in repeat. Yeah. And he said to me, this is new and it's exciting. And, uh, and that he felt was great. great to, he, he was great. That felt great to hear as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, man, passing knowledge is, is it's like the oldest thing we have. And, and, and sometimes we don't even take advantage of it. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, I, you know, I, I never knew how much I would love teaching. And I, I, actually, I absolutely love my job. I love teaching. I love, you know... I mean, we didn't have the academy when I first started at our ships. The, 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 you just came as an intern and you asked questions to learn. 
That's how you would learn. And you would take pictures at the end of the day. And at the end of the day, you'd sit around drinking beer with these guys, asking them questions. That's how, that's how we learn. But now we turn, built an academy. I mean, you know, I mean, it's, it's, and it's been amazing. It's been really cool. And I, <clears throat> I, I think like teaching is you, you're kind of like, you're a farmer, you, you're planting this seed of knowledge, you know, and then students getting back to you with their projects and you watch, that's watching the plant grow. Like, it's like, wow, man, I, I, I taught them that, you know? Wow. I mean, actually, Harry was a student of mine. It was a student of, of, of Rory and Phil's and everything. You, you were a student. Yeah, for sure, know? for sure. So it's cool to see all these students, and I'm working with them now. It's yeah, fucking it's, great. It's a, it's, a beautiful, yeah? it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, um, to watch you guys grow and, 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 and be a part of this, you know, and and watch more students come on. And, and then you guys teach those students and watch them come on, you know? Well, there's, there's a real, there's a really meta process as well of, of, of you guys almost teaching how to teach as well. Um, I, th I think yeah. there's a lot of, um, and I've mentioned delegation, ownership, um, you know, the, the, the willingness to fail or make mistakes, um, a focus on evolution and improving the next time round. I mean, these are all really core concepts to, to this scalable process, which is happening. And, and it's a process that, I, for one, and, and I know you and Harry, everyone is really focusing on making that happen in, in a bigger way. Um, and, and hopefully, I mean, it's happening. It's happening. It's, there's no hopefully about it. Yeah. Cool. And we got we to gotta make up for those bottlenecks, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's... there's um, I'd like to see. I'd like to see other organisations getting in, getting involved with a little bit. There's so much money out there, that, you know. That, that it shouldn't be a problem. It's just I think um, you need to meet the right people, and and I think uh, the time is definitely ripe for that now. With all of these, um, with all, you know the increase of projects happening out there, and it's just a greater awareness. I mean, there's just you know if you if you look over a ten year period at, at how things have changed, the direction is definitely a good one. Yeah. Yeah, I have a couple more questions for you. I don't want to. I don't want to take your take too much of your time. Um, That's great. Yeah. yeah. Um, the you know we're talking about people learning and people getting involved, but the average person. I mean, it can be a little bit daunting at the beginning. You know, to for someone to say, okay, I want to get into off grid. I want to do this, but I've never built anything. I've never you know I've never traveled maybe or. What do you think, what would you say to that person who's, who's sort of beginning to want to do something but feels a little bit nervous at the idea? Jump. Jump, the net will appear. That's what I, I read somewhere in, a, in a, this like self-help book. Jump and the net will appear. I Do it, man. Just fucking do it. And also, you know, I, w I went to this punk rock. I, p I played with this punk rock sh at, at this punk rock show once, right? And, um, it was a, it was a band that they're really old band, they're really old punk rockers, you know. And so they lived a life, they you know. And um something that that stuck with me was like the singer said um he said find what you love to do and do the shit out of it. Yeah. And I was like that's that's the best best advice you can you can ever get. I mean, you'll find a way to do it. Money or not, yeah. you know? Yeah, that's very that's succinct. Mike's closed the business a few times because of money. But he came back, man, and he's been doing it for 40 years. It's love, man. Just loves it. He's never off, is he? It's, it's never, it's never, it's, he's never off. No. He wakes up in the middle of the night with an idea. He wakes up like in the middle of the night you know, with ideas and, and he, you know, he starts thinking about buildings and, and, and design and, and ideas. And, you know, he calls up, I remember, um, uh, assistant that used to work for him. He, she said, yeah, he would call me up like at 
four in the morning with ideas or three in the morning. He woke up and he had an idea and he asked me to write it down. I don't know why he couldn't, but <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, I think he had to get it out. He had to tell somebody, I don't know. Like that's just the way he is, you know, but he loves it. And just, you know, do what you love, man. You'll be happy. People see that they'll be happy. Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, I think, I think Bob Dylan said that as well. He said, um, I think oh, yeah. something along the lines of success is waking up and in the morning and going to bed at night and in between doing what you love or doing what you want yeah. to do. Um, and, and that comes across on, on these, on these builds for sure. Everyone, everyone just loves what they're doing. Um, even if you're doing something relatively rep- repetitive, I, I've heard, I've heard you call out for help with plumbing before saying, does anyone want to do some plumbing? And everyone always love, loves plumbing. And then, and then the, uh, and then it's, well, grab a shovel and dig a hole, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, they, you know, they, yeah, they, they thought they were going to lay some pipe or, or do something. I was like, well, we got to dig that hole first and then we got to lay the pipe in it, you know? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, that what one big lesson for me, um, with little projects was just how important, you know, the guy mixing the cement is. I mean, we yeah. spoke about bottlenecks, but those are the ones you don't tend to think about and, and people don't get that much credit. It's not a glory uh, job, but it's, um, it's an absolutely crux crucial job. Yeah. And you, you don't, uh, it doesn't take long to learn much about mixing cement and then, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and then you're, you're stuck on it. If you do a good job, you know, you end up getting stuck on it sometimes. Um, I, I've been on the cement mixer, actually the Philippines. I was on the cement mixer for a lot of the job. Wow. Yeah. And then I jumped, you know, I did the plumbing when I, when I needed to, but it was, it was great because I, you know, for me, I wasn't there. I wasn't there to learn. I was there to help the people. Yeah. That, that's what, that's what Nepal felt like as well, wasn't it? You, you, um, yeah, I felt like I was, um, but I was very happy to do it, but it was, um, was doing the interruptible jobs. And, uh, yeah. and, uh, those tend to be, you know, the pounding, but I love pounding. My body loves pounding. Yeah. 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 But you know what? You, you, you learn anyway. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you look at the building and how could you not learn? If you, if you're not interested, then you won't learn. But if you're interested, you're going to learn. I mean, it's like. Well, you go around and you speak to the people that just did what you maybe would have liked to do, but you didn't. And you speak to them, you say, well, tell me where the, where the, the bumps were. What, what were the challenges? What happened? And there's a story in every single nook and cranny of, of the building. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Well, listen, I'm going to, I'm going to switch gears slightly and, um, ask you a couple of questions. One is, do you have any, um, do you have any resources or books or videos, websites, um, anything that comes to mind that can really help people get into off-grid building? Um, it could be community. It could not be community. It could be anything that you, that you feel strongly about. It could be anything. Do you have anything that comes to mind? There's a book uh, called Create Your Own Greywater Oasis. Um by Art Ludwig. Uh, that's a pretty good book about gray water, obviously. And if you're interested in that, there's another book called uh, The Biogas Handbook. Mm, okay. Yeah, and that's by David House. I'm like looking at my books right now. Uh-huh. <laughs> I got into earth bag building a little bit. Mm-hmm. I think that's a cool cool way to build as well and that one was just called earth bag building and i think it's by yeah earth bag building by khaki hunter and donald kiff mayor i think i've seen that book that is a quite that, big right? yeah it could it's i don't know how to say that but it, it's um it's a big book isn't it it's got loads of pictures loads of photos is that one there i don't know if you yeah yeah it's yeah. got great great um it's it's mostly drawings, but there are a, a bunch of photos in there, and they're they're great. They're really good. Let's see. There was another straw bale building. I didn't. I haven't really read that much. Oh, the human newer handbook. I read that. Yeah, That's pretty cool. Brilliant book. 
Um, That's a good book. What experience have you had with biodigesters? Not much, man. I um, not much at all. We were going um, to um, we were going to build one in in Nepal, and uh, Martin, who who uh, was going to come and do it. Um, got sick yeah. and didn't didn't end up showing up. So that's definitely on the definitely on my list of things to learn and do because it's so symbolic to have a, f- a flame coming out of waste and yeah, right. you know easing the pressure on trees and yeah. There's gonna I'm definitely gonna speak to someone about that. Cool. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to get involved with it more. Um, there's a, there's another really good book that I think people should uh, check out. Is a uh, it's called the Barefoot Architect. Mm-hmm. That's huge. It's like a, it's like the, it's a Bible. It's huge. Wow. Um, yeah, that's a good one. And you know, there's, um, yeah. Cool. That's good. Those are great. I'm going to, I'm going to list those in the show notes. Um, and then I think one of my, one of my last questions is, uh, if, if you had to pass on, you know, a message to a kid, if you had to pass on or, you had any ask of the audience? What what would it? What does anything come to mind? You know, I think I think we pretty much said it before. You know, find what you love to do and just just do it, do it, do it, do it, and do it. <laughs> like, you know, wow. eat it and breathe it. You know, I. You know, I, uh, when I was growing up, it was music. You know, for me. And I, I always was afraid that, okay, you know, but I need, but I need to have a job. I need to, you know, pay my bills and I need to, you know, you know, I need to have a job so that I can exist and live and in, in this kind of society and everything, you know? So I think that always held me back from doing what I really love to do, you know? And, you know, I found a new love and I still play music though, but I never thought I'd be a plumber. I wasn't a kid thinking, I, you know, this is what I want to do. But I, I don't know. I also try to see the, the, the beauty in things because you never know where you're going to end up, you know, or, or, or what you're going to do. Um, you, your life is going to take a bunch of different paths. And um, I think the best thing is to try to see the positive out of, out of as much as you can and, and, and roll with it. Wow. Well, listen, that's a, a great place to end. So thank you, thank you for 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 speaking. Um, it's a pleasure. Yeah. It's a pleasure to talk as always. Thank you for doing this, man. You know, great. We'll be in touch, Lou. Yeah, Patrick. It's been great. See ya. <laughs> thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Before you go, or rather, immediately after you've gone. Please go down to iTunes, leave a review, help us grow, get more guests, raise more money for projects. We have other projects coming up. You can find news about those on offgrid.vision, where you can also get access to other shows and some phenomenal t-shirts, which go towards, well, the profit of which goes towards new projects. If you have any requests for someone to come on the show, do let me know via the site. Until next time, thanks for listening, and see you soon.